Longtime Columbia Basin baseball coach Pete Domit retired after 45 years of coaching. Pete had many memories, one of which being the 1999 Major League Draft, where three players from Moses Lake High School were selected in the top two rounds. The Columbia Basin Herald caught up with Pete, DJ Garby, Jason Cooper, and Ryan Domit to talk about that time and what impact Pete had on local baseball. Um, I guess let's just kind of start with um, that 99 draft. Um, you know, that's pretty special to see three guys come off of the same team in a town of 12,000, huh? Oh, it was awesome. I mean, at the time, and you know, it, it was it was unheard of, and, and I don't know even to this day if there's been a high school team with 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 three kids drafted, you know, in the, in the first two rounds. It was it was a fun time. I mean, I mean, even even back to when our, our junior year in, in '98, you know, BJ and Jason were getting a lot of national attention, and, and rightfully so. I mean, these guys were going to. You know, to, to all sorts of, uh, of, of uh, national showcases and whatnot. So there was always a, 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 a buzz early on about you know the kind of the, the talent base and you know in, in the basin. And we had you know Brian Johnson over there in Efrata that was going to UW, and certainly Jeff Havilo who had come out of Efrata and was playing at UW. Um, also drafted ninety nine. It was, it was a, 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 a crazy time. Well, you know, Washington we, 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 in general, right? And when they're ten. So, for Washington in, in general, I, 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 absolutely. But it, I mean, it was my senior year of high school. It was fun. Just, I mean, we we'd have scouts. We'd have scouts at our at our baseball practices, not even the games. I mean, we we, we would have scouts come out to, to uh, and watch us practice, which was cool. We would have scouts come to our high school, and in between classes, we're meeting with these guys. You know, we're filling out questionnaires and just kind of talking with them. It was it was it was crazy. I mean, at the time. It was it was a little over my head, you know. They're they're, they're, oh, yeah. they're you know they're talking about you know the draft and if I had an agent and, and all this crazy stuff. I'm like, man, I, I just want to play baseball. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, I, I I had no no idea about the the whole the whole business side of it and, and whatnot. I'm like, you know, I was just I was just thrilled that there was that there was you know scouts professional scouts interested in me. Right. Right. You know, and, and that and that was half the thrill. You know, confidence was was obviously running very high after our, our junior summer, going into our senior year. You know, when when the, us on the River Dogs won the World Series, you know, and there was there was there was five of us on that team that were that were going to be you know on the varsity team the following year. So we knew that we had a chance of, you know, of being pretty, pretty doggone good, right. you know, and then being ranked first in the state and nationally at, at eighth, I think, um, was awesome. And, and, and it's something that we took, we took very serious and you know, something that we had, a, we had a lot of pride in. You know, we even, you know, even during we we practiced like we expected to win. Like we we would get off we would get off the bus expecting to win, expecting to take two. Right, right. You know, and, and that was that was kind of our philosophy. You know, obviously probably a time when people are going, oh shit, you know, Moses Lake is here. <laughs> I mean, we had a gosh, looking back on it, 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 it it's fun. I don't know if there's archives or, or whatnot, but you can go back and and kind of look at our, our, our team stats, you know, and it's not just from what me, BJ, and Jason did. I mean, we had other guys, you know, on the team, you know, five, six, seven home runs. You know, we just, we were, we were pretty, we were a pretty special high school baseball team. And that was, you know, that, that's always going to, it's always going to make me smile when I, when I think back to that time and, 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 you know, just the immense talent we had. Um, now, when you said five from that River Dogs team that won the World Series, who were those? Was it, it was me. It, it was me. It, it was me, Jason, BJ, Brian Scott was our starting shortstop who who ended up getting drafted. Um, What's his last name? Scott S K A U G. He got drafted um, out of out of a what yeah. school was it in uh, in Southern California. He played a couple of years of pro ball, you know, in the Houston Astros organization. And uh, he was gonna he was gonna be our starting shortstop going into our senior year, but he had shoulder surgery. Oh no! And you know he he didn't he didn't play all that much. Right, right. And Ryan Hanley, H A N D L Y, 
was a left-handed pitcher. I was also on that team that, uh, you know, that was that was one of our guys our senior year of high school. Now, when you say ranked fourth in the country, what what class were you? Yeah, a two A team at that time. I think we were eighth. Oh, okay. Eighth in the country. Okay. I had heard four, so I guess. Um, now, when is that? I'm on what two A, four A. That was three A. Okay. Yeah, now I, I don't know if it was if it was national. We were ranked nationally as a three A team, or we were just ranked nationally, right? Like okay. uh, amongst uh, among, amongst all teams, right? Right. Oh, okay. Well, that's even more special to know that you're ranked with San Jose, or you know, or oh yeah, we were, or, I mean, we were, we were or something. You know, the, the Westminster Christian uh, uh, Academy out of, out of Miami that's in the top three every every year. I mean, we were ranked right up there with those guys. You know, I mean, and, and you got a, I mean, that's pretty special when you got a town that got about twelve stoplights. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it wasn't your typical, it wasn't your typical, if I can recall, uh, high school baseball crowd that we get to. I mean, we have, it seems like you know, one hundred and fifty people, you know, out for a high school baseball game. You know, it's kind of. A, you know, the Chiefs were playing that night. It's kind of what you know what what people wanted to come out and see. You know, on top of the the twenty plus scouts that were there every game. Um, you know, do you, were they coming? I mean, obviously, BJ um, was kind of a guy to see. I mean, I guess Jason as well. Did did they suddenly discover others by coming? It's like, oh shit, look that catcher control man, or or that catcher hits. <laughs> I, I thought a lot to thank, whatever, you know? I, I, hey, I, I've got a lot to thank Jason and BJ for because, it's, I mean, they were the big fish that brought in these scouts, you know, and, and I parlayed the scouts being here watching these guys as, hey, now I'm going to show these guys what I can do. Right. You know, so they brought in, you know, these are the big fish that brought in the, you know, brought in the scouts. And, you know, I, I took it, I took advantage of that. You know, oh, I, yeah. I started talking to, I started talking to, to to scouts my at the end of my junior season was when you know scouts had me start to fill out some questionnaires and I was invited down to the area code games um, in, in, in Southern California and all that which you know which was a big deal I didn't I didn't get a chance to go but I was invited yeah um, sure no I mean I'm not but, now is baseball. I mean, obviously, if Robin Young can make it to the bigs at 19, and now there's, there's even a few more, but, you know, they're, they are coming right out of high school into, into the system as compared to what Jason did and going to college and getting drafted out of college, right? It seems like the major leagues are, are, are getting younger and younger every year. You know, you got, you know, Harper obviously made it at 19. You got this, this Lindor kid with a... Uh, with Cleveland that got broken at twenty, yeah. So you can, you, I mean, you can see it. But these are these are special, special type of, you know, special type of athletes and special polish on their game. Right? I, I, I can think as think back of a nineteen year old kid. I might have had the tools at the time, but I was far from having like the the mental ability to deal with playing in front of that many people, you know, the, the peaks and valleys of baseball, you know, the grind of it. Oh, yeah. The, 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 and, and most importantly, the polish on my game. You know, I, 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 I'm sure, especially back then, from a catching standpoint, I wasn't even close to to, to, to big league ready. You know, I needed those, those couple extra years to develop. That's why it's, it's so impressive when you see these 19, 20, 21, even 21 year old kids um, reaching the big leagues. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a testament to those guys and, and their, their ability. Is baseball kind of a chew them up, a use them and chew them up kind of sport? Is, is it just sort of, okay, we'll use you until you got nothing left and then that's it, or is that. It, it's a, it, you know, it, it, it's a business. Yeah. It, it, there, there's, there's, there's no doubt about that. It's a business. You kind of like to, you, you kind of like to think that, you know, the team that drafted you up and, and, you know, you, you, they, they, they develop you and you get to the big leagues and, you know, you have a couple of years. You'd like to think that there's, you know, some, some loyalty there. And, and maybe in, in some cases there are, you know, I, I certainly, I certainly got a, got a fair shake in Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh. You'll, but, but you will see it where, you know, you'll get traded or you'll get released or you'll get 
know, designated for assignment or something like that, where you, you kind of take it personal at first because you're like, hey, man, you know, this, this is the team that, you know, that drafted me. You're supposed to believe in me. Right. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it is a business, and the general managers have a job to do, and their job is to win, to find to find winning players. Sure, sure. Well, you know, and, and you had your fair share of injuries, and sometimes they stay by you, and, and sometimes they just ship you out. And, you know, I thought it was crazy when they had that Mitchell report on the steroids, and they find out that it's Pettit and Giambi and all of those guys. So who do they go after, the minor league guys? <laughs> you know, they, yep. they leave yep. the superstars alone and go after a minor league guy just just trying to get out of double A, you know? Yeah, that's hard. That's heartbreaking as a as a, as a fan of baseball. Right. You know, when, when you see when you see all your heroes or the guy, you know, your favorite players. You know, when their names are mentioned and something like that, it, it's just kind of disappointing. I know, so I know, guys have their reasons for why for you know for why they choose to, to take steroids or whatnot. It's just it, it's just it's just it's hard to swallow as a guy that has played. And it's just kind of a, a, a disappointment when you when you see guys that you revere and you admire and you appreciate their talent, you know, when you when you realize that they you know they chose to go that route, you know, instead of doing it, you know, like everybody else has to do it, you know, just just hard 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 work, blood, sweat, and tears, you know. Exactly. I mean, and it's like Jesus, you got so much talent, <laughs> you know, you don't have to. But I guess where yeah. I was going with that is the big kids get favorites. I mean, the, the Yankees turn their head on more than one Babe Ruth or Mickey Mantle incident, you know. Uh, what, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, that's that's not neither here nor there. Um, what can you tell me? I mean, that that uh, that River Dog team that won the World Series in '98. Did you play again? Or was that your last summer? That was my last summer. I, I, I would have been on the River Dogs, obviously, the, the following year, but, but I decided to sign. Yeah, no, I, I got mean, you. We, so we, tell we, me just, what was that like? I mean, you know, I mean, around here, well, I, I covered them last summer, and, you know, there was teams from North Carolina that came in with 20 guys that all played on the same high school team, and then you look at our little River Dog team with guys from Quincy, guys from Warden, guys from Yafreda, you know what I mean? So I, yeah. I was just kind of curious. Was it like that when you played River Dogs, or was it just all mode yeah. play? No, it, it was. It was the basement. We had we had kids from Efreda, kids from, from Quincy, kids from Othello. Um, we had a kid from from Mesa, uh, Stephen Bailey, who, who went on and played at, at, at Washington State. But, but it, it was fun. You all you always knew who these guys were because at some point you played against them, whether it be a, in an all star tournament or, or you know or, or or in Babe Ruth. So you always know who these guys were and getting the chance to play with them and kind of you know, you spent all the years of competing against them. Now you're on the same team with them it, it, it was awesome. You know, and and talk about I mean we were we were a talented team. There, there there's no doubt about that. But the the, the instant um um, symmetry that we had with, with these guys and, and the team chemistry. I mean, we, we, we're, we were all buddies. You know, we hung out. There wasn't, there wasn't a, a competitive, oh, you're from Euphrates, I'm from Moses Lake. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna butt heads. I mean, we were all in it together for the purpose of winning. And then it was a, a Columbia Basin gig, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it was, we're from the Basin, we're not, you know, we represent, oh, I, I, we represent the Basin. Well, absolutely. I mean, we, we weren't, I mean, our, our, the, the, the colors are, are, are teal, teal and, and navy blue. You know, it's not anybody's high school colors. You know, the, the Columbia Basin River Dogs aren't wearing maroon and gold. They're, they're not wearing, you know, the black and orange from right. Freighter. You know, this is. These colors represent the Columbia Basin, you know, and it was, you know, we were very proud of that. We were very proud of the fact that we all came from very small towns, yet we're doing very big things in the baseball world. We were very proud of that. Yeah. Um, now, I know I wanted to ask, I mean, I guess just in, in general, now, did Haverloo, was he four years ahead of you guys? He was, he was, uh, three years. Okay. He three years. Um, but he I, was I, already I, I, in college when you were getting drafted. Yes, he was a, he, he was a junior, he was a junior at UW, our senior year of high school. Okay. Uh, and I was just trying to check and make sure I had that understood. Did you ever play with him or did you ever? I, I never did. Okay. BJ did. B, he just BJ, happened to come out the same time you three did. Yep. 
Okay, Doug. I think BJ played with with Jeff. BJ was a freshman yeah. on the River Dog team, and so BJ, I think, was the only one that played with with Jeff. Okay, that's fine. I just want to make sure I understood because I thought for some reason there was four that came out, but maybe it was just reference to Jeff being from the area. Okay. Um, now, did you catch? Were you the catcher? Or was BJ the catcher? You were the catcher, right? I was. A, I was the catcher. BJ was our our pitcher and center fielder. Okay, gotcha. And where did Cooper play? Cooper was right field. Okay. Um, now, does it matter that that your dad was with you, like since you're ten? Um, oh, I think I, I think that had a lot to do with it. I mean, he had a lot to do with 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 teaching me the game of baseball. You know, in, inspiring the passion to play baseball, the love of baseball, and and the way to play it the right way. You know, there's a right way and a wrong way to, to play the game of baseball. You know, I've always been taught to, you know, to, to, to play it with class. You win with class, you lose with class. You don't show anybody up. You know, you have respect for your opponents and the umpires. And, you know, and, 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 and you work hard. You know, you don't take it for granted. Baseball should be fun. And if you're not having fun, go do something else. Right. You know, and, and, and I, I think I can look back at our team and everybody had fun. No one was, was there because... Their parents are making them. No one was there because uh, all my buddies are playing, so I may as well play too. Everybody was there to have fun and to win, and that's the way we. Uh, again, that's the way we. Pre- that's, absolutely, that's the way we practice, and that's the way we played. Is that carry over into the way you conduct yourself as a man? You know, we talked about shortcuts. We talked about different things. But, you know, a lot of times guys just forget. You know, you look, oh, Christ, did you see that 30-30 on Doc Gooden and Daryl Strawberry? Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, you look at Doc and he looked like he just crawled out from under the bridge. And what a sad yeah. scenario. Or is that just sad because it's Doc Gooden and there's a lot of junkies out there that, you know, never, you've never even heard of, you know? I, I think it's very easy for guys, especially at the big league level, to get caught up in the fray. Yeah. You know, because, because everybody, you know, as soon as you make it, now everybody's your friend and everybody wants to do you favors and everybody wants to do this for you and do that for you and everybody's telling you it's okay and everybody's telling you everything is going to be okay. Hey, try this, do this. I can see how, how some guys can get caught up in it. Right. You know, I, I, I was very fortunate, not that I didn't have the temptations myself, but I was very fortunate to have, you know, the, the, the type of, the type of upbringing that I, that I did have from, you know, my, my, my parents to, 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 to be, first of all, to, st- to, to know to stay away from stuff like that and, and, and suddenly to have the ball to stand up myself right. and be like, I'm, I, I'm better than this. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to give in, I'm not going to give into peer pressure. I know who my friends are. And I know who's trying to lead me in the right direction and, and who's trying to lead me in the other direction. Well, see, and that's the thing that kind of pisses me off with a, a Johnny Manziel or, you know, some of these guys. Or, or better yet, how about, you know, Shane Ray with the Denver Broncos that get, gets busted with, you know, buying 30 ounces of pot the week of the yeah. draft and nobody even cares. Are you sorry? Yeah, I'm sorry I got caught. Oh, okay, well, you yeah. Here's 20 mil. Thanks for coming. Yeah, I mean, but you, you, know, you see, I mean, you see, you see entourages. Yeah. Sometimes start to get a lot bigger. What you know, once 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 you make and all this, when when it, in retrospect, they should be getting a lot smaller. Right. You know, because your 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 inner circle should you should be surrounded by guys that, that first and foremost you trust wholeheartedly, right. and you know. That they have your best interest at stake. It's, it, it, you know, it's not about, you know, what can you do for, for, for them? It's, hey man, we're going to do everything we can to help you make it. You know, to help, you know, to, 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 to keep you on the street now. Sure. Sure. And, and that's great to have a, a guy, whatever, a childhood friend like BJ, you know, I mean, it, oh, oh, absolutely. it didn't quite work out like he thought, but, you know, from what I've talked to him, he kind of baseball lost his, Passion about midway through the business side of it. Yeah, I mean, the, the business side's a, a, a tough aspect. I mean, again, when you're an 18, 18 year old kid and you're drafted, you're just excited that you're playing professional baseball and, and, and a team team wants it. You know, it, it's when you start getting, you know, close to the, 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 the double A, the, you're on the 40 man roster, now you're off. That's when it starts really, you really start to see the business 
the side of it. Right. You know, the guys that, you know, the coaches or, or, or whatever that, you know, they, they've been in your corner, you know, when you're 18, 19, 20, and now, now you're on the 40-man roster. Now, now you're kind of seeing a different feel for them because, at that time, it's time to put up or shut up. You know, it, it's time to hey, you're knocked on the door of the big league. You, 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 you know, you, you've got to be ready. Right, right. With, which you, I, I, looking back, I can see both sides. I can see that you know they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna pat you on the back when they're trying to develop you. And then once they feel like they've developed you, now it's like okay, yeah, you know, go 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 recruiters, you know, what the hell? Exactly, go go show us. Yeah, go show us what you know what you can do. Right. I guess where I was but, going with that though is is you know you've known BJ for years, and and I guess is he still a friend? Oh, he's one of my one of my best friends. Right. And, and me, me, me and BJ, me and BJ and and, and Jason and, and even Brian Scott. I mean, we we went to the same the same uh, uh, kindergarten. BJ was in my kindergarten class. It was nice at that time, Rodney. Having having three even four guys with, with, with Brian, all kind of going through the same stuff. You know the grind of the minor leagues. You know the, the peaks and valleys, the, the slumps, the long bus trips. It, it was nice to have friends yeah. that you can call and and relate to. You know, like man, gosh, you know I'm you know I'm I'm in it over twenty or gosh, we've been on the road for a week and a half, and and it's nice to have guys that that can understand that. You know, and, and, and they can, you know, house, middle of the night. Was this a cell phone oh, age? You know, or was this oh, standing yeah, in front we, of the payphone with a fucking full of quarters? We, we we kept in contact, especially in the in, in the low lower minor leagues. We kept in, in, in constant contact. It was kind of fun. In, in high A, me and Jason were actually in the same league, so I got to see I got to see Jason every other week and play against him. In, <laughs> in double A, in double A, all three of us were in the same league, so it was kind of it was kind of fun. You know, getting a chance like, hey, we're going to to New Britain, Connecticut, you know, I'm going to get a chance to play BJ, or, you know, we're going to go, we're going to Akron, and, you know, I'm going to see Coop here, you know, in a week, which, which was fun, playing against, you know, high school teammates, guys I've known my entire life, and, and, you know, you we tell me, who, who were you with at that time? I was, I was with Altoona, the Altoona Curve, in double A. How do you spell that again? A-L-T-O-O-N-A. Okay, and BJ, who was he with? BJ was with uh, uh, the New Britain Rock Cats. That's Connecticut. And then what? Uh, Brian. Brian. And, 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 and Jason was with the, uh, the Jason was with the Akron Arrows. A E R O S. Yeah, no, I mean, and, and that's kind of special. I mean, to, to know that, you know, I mean, here y'all came up through the ranks and a bunch of kindergarten kids, you know, I mean, low light kids. Um, does that mean something to you? You know, I mean, you're excited for them, they're excited for you. Absolutely, because we were, <laughs> we, 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 we were, we were living our dream. I mean, the, 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 I can think back to our childhood and the, the countless, countless rounds of batting practice, us three would, you know, throw to each other, whether, you know, it, it, whether we were over at the, the field over at Lakeview, you know, in Little Eagle, and then we, we move on to high school, you know, and we're, you know, we're down taking, taking cuts before practice, you know, we're down there on a, on a Sunday taking cuts, like that's all we wanted to do. Uh, that was our, we had baseball tunnel vision, and, and to get to a, to get to a point where we're you know we're we're, we're, in, we're in double A, we're knocking on the door of the big league, and we're all playing against each other, you know, and, and we're kind of looking around. It was very special for me. I remember being behind the plate when Jason's up to bat. I'm like, I'm trying to, to throw fingers down, trying to get you know, trying to trying to find a way to get one of my best friends out. You know, it was it was it was kind of a it, it was kind of a, a weird. Kind of a weird dynamic. I'll bet. I'll bet. You have to, okay, what the hell couldn't he hit in the cage the other day? <laughs> exactly. You know, and, 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 and Jason Jason was a hell of a hitter. I mean, he was yeah. the, the, clean, the, the cleanup hitter on, on every team in the minor league that I played against. You know, he was, he was hitting four. He was, yep, big, strong lefty. So, you know, we, we would have team meetings, you know, going over the, the other team's lineup. And they're like, yeah. hey, you know, what can you talk about? What can you tell me about Cooper? You know, they're asking me, and I'm like, well, how much time do you have? Right. You know, but that you know, was fun. I got, I'll always cherish those, you know, playing against those guys. And, and to see Jason now on the, 
on, on the front office side and, yeah. and, and it was get get a World Series ring. I mean, I could not be I could not be happier for him. You know, he's one of the hardest workers I've, I've ever met, and this this ring was was very very well deserved. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, and it, think about it. I mean, one guy on that team is drafted number five, four head, four places ahead of Barry Zito. <laughs> you know, one yeah. guy makes. Well, how long were you? Were you ten years or nine years in the in the bigs? Ten. Ten, ten. ten seasons. Okay, so ten seasons in the bigs, and other guys got a World Series ring. I mean, if you if you were sitting there in Little League just dreaming up your own dream, what would that be? Would you even believe that? If I'd have said you're I mean, the bigs, you're, 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 you know, I, at that time, I, I, I would have I would have thought to, to think that that you know it was gonna it was gonna be like that. It was gonna go according to plan. I, I, I think right now. As an adult, as having lived through it, I look back and I, and I, I, I still, I'm like, I can't, you know, I can't believe that happened. You know, you had, like, like you're saying, DJ was was the, the Gatorade National High School Player of the Year. Yeah, he, he was, he was, he was the the best high school baseball player. Same you list know, as A. Rod, Rod Kershaw, um, Sheffield. Exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, not uh, just uh, anybody. Uh, yeah, a huge, huge honor. Yeah. You know, Jason was. Jason with, with with the World Series ring. I mean, guys would. I, I played ten seasons in the big leagues, and I would give anything for a World Series ring. Jason, Jason's got a World Series ring. I mean, it, it, it's awesome. You know, you can you can probably go back in the archive and, and find a find a picture of us and you know fifth grade all stars and you know us, us three on that. And you know, and you can show people be like, okay, you know, three of these, three of the kids on, you know, on the four of the kids on the with, with Scott, four of the kids in, in this picture are going to go on and play professional baseball. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, you know, it's absolutely nuts. I mean, maybe not, but you know, I mean, and you know, nowadays, now, would you say, all right, so Moses Lake was twelve thousand at that time. Okay, uh -huh. that's, that's a small town. I mean, obviously, there's guys that come out of whatever. Some place in South Dakota, or some place in Georgia, or whatever, or even now the, the Dominican, you know, small, yeah. small villages and stuff, but not three, do you think? Yeah, three was. was I mean, three's pretty special, special off the same team, and I, I don't think it's ever. I, I don't think it's happened again. No, I, I know that at the time it, it was the first time that three kids were drafted drafted that high, the first two rounds. Yeah, you know, off the same high school team. I, I don't know if it, if, if it's. A, if it's happened since. Well, that's what I'd like to ask Jason, to tell you the truth. That's what he does, right? He's a scout? Yes. Hey, well, <laughs> what are the odds, you know? You, you, that's what you do for a job nowadays, you know? I mean, you, you think you're going to find somebody? Yeah, I mean, that would be interesting to hear his perspective from the other side as a scout. But, yeah, no, yeah, I mean, absolutely. that's pretty special. Um, okay, any idea when your dad's going to be around? Now, like I said, though, your, your dad coached you from, like, T-ball. Now, did he coach? He coached you when you were in, at, at Moses Lake, right? Yes. Okay, and then? Yep. He was our. He was, was, he, our, was our he the, the River Dogs coach? He was not. Oh, okay, Randy he was. was he did, he did, no, it was. Uh, well, Randy was a part of it, but Jerry Tout was our was our head coach. T H A U T. He was a, he was our, our head coach. Mike Rios was was our pitching coach. He played the uh, Moses Lake guy to play a little pro ball. Right. Um, Randy Randy was around. Um, but yeah, I mean that was our coaching staff, and it was kind of a fun summer. I'll bet. I'll bet. You know, and I think it, I'm, I appreciate you sharing that little ditty bit about, you know, okay, we're off in the miners making those Bull Durham bus rides, you know, to the middle of nowhere in the middle of the night, you know. And oh, yeah. Talking on the phone. Yep. Was, was it cell phones or was it pay phones? It, it, no, it, it was cell phones. Okay. But that, was, that, was when, like, that was when cell phones just came out. There'd be like, there's like six guys on the team with a cell phone, so you guys, you know you're you're sharing your cell phone with other guys and, and whatnot. But but gosh, I mean, it, it seems like so long ago, and you know it it was not 18, 18 years. Yeah. Well, you know, and you look at it, you know, it wasn't quite like when it was that show with the rookie or whatever it was, where everybody lined up in front of the payphone and. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it wasn't like that. 
Okay, but anyway, um, pretty special days. Um, what are your plans now? You're you're back in town uh, doing a little coaching. Um, yep. BJ's a successful CEO for an up and coming brewery. Cooper's with you know the Cubs. Just what are your plans from this from now on? I mean, are you looking at maybe coaching the Big Ben or getting into coaching in any way, or what are your plans for the future? Yeah, I'll, I'm, I'm, I'll help out here. You know, I'll help out here at Big Ben for you know for, for the foreseeable future. I mean, this is my dad's last year. It's been right. it's been a thrill, co- you know, coaching with him, Jameson Lang, who's who's been his assistant for years, is, is going to take over next year. And, you know, he'd he'd ask me to 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 stay on and help him out, and and I'd love to do it. You know, okay. I think we I think we got a good thing going on here. These you know the the way these guys coach is is exactly you know the way I was brought up to coach, and and you know it, it it's been fun to give back. You know, I've got a, I've got a high school education. You know, I did not go to college. My 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 education isn't baseball. You know that 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 that's what I know. You know and. And, and, and it's been a thrill, you know, to, to come here every day and, and try to teach these kids the way I was taught. So you're okay behind the scenes. It's not all about me and I played in the bigs and I need to wear the big jersey. And... I am very, I'm in my comfort zone, kind of just lying in the shadows. You know, I've, I've never been a spotlight guy. You know, I've, I've never been a, a, I've never been a, 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 not big on self-promoting. You know, I, I, I'm fine. I'm fine, you know, just kind of laying, laying, in, the, laying in the weeds going about my business. <laughs> that's good to know because you know how many guys whatever you know I mean I understand Brett Favre when the idea is okay when this is done I'm done and it's over and I'm going to hang on as long as I can but yeah. you know, whatever somewhere in the back of your mind you'd like to see him go out like John Elway you know or, whatever, sure. or even you know, sure. but who knows I mean at least they're not ending up in jail because they can't just can't get out of the spotlight um, sure. but um, what the uh, one last question. What What is it about Moses Lake? BJ says, you know, I've lived all over the country, traveled all over, and, and Moses Lake is home. What, why, why come back here when you could live in Orlando or, or whatever? Familiarity. Yep. You know, familiarity, our, 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 our deep roots here. I mean, my family's here. Uh, again, my friends, you know, the, friend, the same friends that I've had since, since kindergarten are, are here. You know, it, it, this is this is home. Every other place that I've been, I've been all over the place, has never felt like home. And, you know, and I've always thought of that. I'm, I'm like, well, this is just a temporary six month stop. Yeah. You know, every, every off season, I, I'm going to have my my plane my, my plane ticket booked into Spokane to to drive. You know, the the hour and a half down to most place. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was like never really even a airport. <laughs>